Have you ever been in a situation where you saw a document, you had no clue what, what it was, and you was in front of the signer and didn't know what to do? Well, in this video, we are going to create an AI bot that's going to analyze the document, tell you exactly what it is, tell you exactly where the signer should sign and where and how you should notarize the document and so much more. So I'm going to show you how to do this right now. Before we begin, I just want to touch on some current events that's happening. So um, Apple just announced that they will be including AI intelligence in their Apple products um, and the whole world is jumping. It's going into a frantic mode about this um, It's good for Apple, but I guess uh, people are concerned about having their personal information uh, on um, or in, in the uh, artificial intelligence world and, and what that information is going to do uh, due to everyone. So to that effect, Elon Musk came out and stated that he will not allow Apple devices um, inside of his facilities. So if, if you have an Apple device, he says he's going to put it in a cage somewhere at, at the front desk and not allow you to use that device and on all of his devices in his offices, um, you're not going to be able to, to use it if Apple decides to um, implement this AI uh, technology into their um, hardware. Um, they're calling it Apple intelligence. So we'll play on AI instead of artificial intelligence, they're calling it Apple intelligence. I say all this to say that with this automation that we are going to do today, you have to be very mindful of taking pictures of um, legal documents that especially that contains sensitive information like social security numbers and things like that. You want to be mindful of taking pictures of those information to have the tool that we will build today analyze that document because the last thing you want is any type of liability to come into play. Um, you definitely don't want to have to call your uh, your ENO insurance company to explain this to them because um, who knows if they even cover it. <laughs> so just be mindful um, of what you oh how you use this technology. Yes, it's powerful. Yes, it um, can help us. But we have to also be mindful that it's still new. And when we actually take a picture of a document, where does that information go? Or how is it stored? Things like that. You just have to be mindful of it. Okay. All right, so we are going to jump back in to what we're going to build today. Again, so this uh, workflow, this automation is going to you're going to be able to take a picture of a document, say it's a closing disclosure, alter a uh, mortgage or note or some document that you don't even not even aware of, some new document they come out with tomorrow. You take a picture of that document, and this automation is going to automatically analyze the document, summarize what the numbers are. Um, tell you best practices on on w about the document. Tell you, you know how to complete the document, how to sign it, things like that. It's going to analyze it and, and give you a snapshot of exactly what to do. Okay, and this could be done in real time. Um, the automation that we're using, we're using a few tools here. So I'm going to go through one, each one. Um, the first um, software that we're using is called Slack. Slack is um, it's a, a chat. It's most mostly like a team chat tool. Um, that you can use and it's free for the most part um, well, what at least the free features allows you to do a lot uh, with their free features I'm signed up on the free account but the free with the free account you, you're able to take a picture of the, the document and then also plug it into the next system I'm going to uh, discuss which is make make is our workflow system it allows multiple software applications to communicate with each other and allow you to seamlessly create workflows okay um make uh is free to use i'll include link everything i discussed today i'm going to include links in the, sh in, in the show notes so that way you can sign up for these accounts and everything that i've discussed today you can pretty much start for little to no money um but uh make is a great tool if you ever heard of um Zapier is a competitor to Zapier and to me it's a lot better than Zapier okay All right that's what we'll be using and um, another piece that we'll be using we'll be using open AI okay open AI is um, you know it's chat GBT is the that's the it's the it's the conglomerate that um, hosts a chat GBT okay um, in order to um, use 
in order to analyze the document, we're using um, chat, their latest model, which is uh, GPT-40. It allows to you to scan images and analyze images and things like that. You could even, on your phone, you could even take a picture of a live event and then um, um, the chat GPT-40 can analyze documents and a uh, picture, sorry, in real time. So it, it's, it's amazing technology and we'll, we'll get a chance to play with that today. Um, in order to sign up, you just have to go to um, platform.openai.com. Again, a link will be in the show notes. You go to billing, you want to add your payment method. Once you add your payment method, uh, I believe the minimum is $10 and then you have this replenish it for, um, you can set your replenishment amount and then um, once you once you once you fund your OpenAI account, you can go in and get uh, your API link or your API code. Um, your, sorry, your API key. I'm saying everything, but what I need to say, API key, and then you just plug it into uh, Make, and that'll allow Make to communicate with the OpenAI. The last piece we're going to use, piece of software we're going to use today, is called Twilio. Twilio allows you to create your own phone numbers. This is not necessary, but I just wanted to show you the technology. Um, that we can use it um, with uh, Make. So with Twilio, it'll allow us to text message or send a text message to ourselves. So say we're at the closing table and you take a picture of a document, you, you'll get you'll get the message back in Slack, but then you could also get it as a text message as well, or you can just you know use your imagination on how you would like to use this. So if you take a picture of a document, you could automatically um, have the message sent to like your title, the title agency or signing service, or whoever hired you for the for the assignment, and get some feedback from them at, at, while at the same time using OpenAI to analyze the document. Okay, all right. Well, that's enough talking. Let's let's, let's jump right in. Okay, actually, let me show you the complete scenario, and then we'll build it ourselves. Okay, and if you are part of the community, um, I have a um, OpenAI course where um, I teach you how to build all the automa automations. And um, everything that I do here, you'll be able to basically get this entire scenario already pre-built for you. You just have to hit the, the more button down here, hit import blueprint. Once you upload it, then it'll uh, just automatically paste everything here for you. But um, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how to build everything from scratch. But if you're lazy like me, you just go into the community, download the, the blueprint and then, and then uh, install it into your, your main account. OK, of course, you just have to connect your Slack uh, channel. You have to connect um, your open AI account and your Twilio account as well. OK, but then that you'll be good to go. OK. All right. So let's, let's take a bird's eye view of what was done here. So what we're going to do is we have create a, once we create a channel in Slack and I'll show you that as well. Um, this automation is looking for any um, pictures or any images that's uh, been taken um, on Slack, and once an image is, is taken, then it'll download the image into into Make, and then once we download the image in Make, we'll have OpenAI or uh, ChatGPT 4.0 analyze that um, image, and once it analyzes the image, then it'll send what it'll send the response back to Slack, and then it'll also send a text message to you as well. Okay, so this is a pretty small automation, but it's pretty powerful. Again, I, I you know, I wanted to, um, you to move with discretion and not use this um, in in the wrong case. All right, and so especially if it, the document contains anything that's sensitive. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and let's uh, let's start building this thing. All right, so we're gonna start a new, we'll start a new um, a new workflow, a new scenario. And the first thing we should do is jump into Slack. So once you set up your free account, free account with Slack, you can download the, the you can download the app on your phone and your mobile device. So that, that'll be good that it, you've taken a picture like at a closing table or something like that. And you can also um, download the Slack app. So that's what I did in this case. Just it's easier for demo purposes. Once you create your account in the Slack um, app. Um, you can let me just uh, let me see if I can reduce my screen a little bit here. I'm sorry. Um, all right, so you can see it. All right, there you go. Let me just uh, reduce my screen so you can see it, make it a little easier for you to see. Oh, I didn't realize that. All right, sorry. So once you create your um, Slack account, then you'll be able to create what's called a channel. 
All right. So if you click on channel, you can just hit create. You can uh, create a channel. Once we create a channel, you, you name the channel and you either have an option to make it public or private. It doesn't matter um, with, with Slack. But if you have, say, if you have, if you wanted to create these, if you had a team, say, for example, more than one person on your team, and you can create different uh, explainer um, channels for each team member. And then you can make each one private and, and each member can have access to that specific channel. But in our case, you know, it's, if it's just you as a single um, signing agent, then you could just create a public uh, channel. I created a private channel just to show you, but uh, if you take a peek at my other channels, I have some private, some public, and the, anything that's private, we have a, have a lock on it. Anything that's public, we'll just have a hat. Okay. All right. So I already went ahead and created um, a private channel called the AI Doc Explainer Demo. And so what we want to do next is we let's, we could just jump back into uh, OpenAI. Let me just close these tabs. All right. We jump back into Open. Um, sorry to make. Um, what we want to do is we want to hit Slack. Let's hit Slack. And what we want to do is once we hit Slack, what we want to do is we want to watch for watch watch for a public. Sorry, a, a private channel message. So we're watching for a private channel message. Okay. And what we want to do is, is we want to select from the list. Um, and then we want to go to AI doc explainer demo, right? And we'll just set it to one and hit okay. What we can do now is best practice. And what I always like to do is I like to rename um, every module that I put in here just so we can understand what, how everything, how the workflow is going. We say rename and then we want to say look and just let's give it a little emoji right hit okay all right so it's looking for images now let's just test this uh, actually let's hit save and let's test it okay let's uh, uh run this module only Good. When it's green, it lets you know that it's successful. And if we hit this magnifying glass, we can see that it connected to the channel. Good. So after we um, are looking, how the scenario is looking for images, um, and you will notice, you would notice the little uh, clock here. This letting you know that it's on a timer. So the timer is on the lower left-hand corner. This one is set to 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 to, to um, look for images every 15 minutes. You might want to set it to every every five minutes. Um, you can set our whatever threshold you like and you can set it that way but we'll be we'll be running it manually in this case but when you on the when you're on the road you might want to set it to every like five minutes or every minute or so so that way uh if you are at a closing and you want when you snap the document that it'll kind of pick it up right away okay so after we look for the image what we have to do we have to download the image into um we have to download the image we have to download it into make so we can say download download a file okay and it's looking for a, a private url download link if we click on this it'll open up the um the the first um trigger so if we go to the files url private download link okay we hit okay and that's cool all right so let's just rename this and we are going to name it download and the download image. All right, awesome. Emoji. And let's just say, let's just use this, let's just use this picture file. Download an image. Okay. So let's just save that. So one thing I just want to warn you about with Slack is that um, with the, actually with the integration between Slack and Make, the integration is a little lag, okay? So it doesn't happen instantly. It takes a while before um, Make realizes that there's an image. I'm not sure what the, the backend API is, but it's a little slower than you'll find with other automations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an image to Slack and then we will continue and then we'll run the automation. I usually like to run the automation as we build it, but in this particular case, um, just to save on time, I understand that um, Slack is a little bit slower with their integration with Make, so we just have to be a little patient with that. So 
Let's go. Let's jump back onto Slack. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Let me see. Give me one second. I'm going to pull an image. Okay. So these are some image files I have. Let me just pull it here. One second. Um, what should we do? Let's do an. Uh, um, we can do. I feel close to the disclosure. Okay. So I have a sample closing disclosure here. Um, you can take a look at. This is from a closing that I that I completed a few years ago. I just I redacted all of the private information, so nothing here nothing here is private. And man, look at that rate three point one two five. What would the average buyer right now do if they can get three point one two five right now? <laughs> right? What is it? Like seven something. So, uh, so what the what the what the automation is going to do is going to analyze this document and it, it doesn't have any signature lines. So let's just see what it, let's see what it does. Okay. So I'm going to, um, and it's an image file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag it and drop it here. Okay. And if you were on your, if you were on the road, you could just there, there, there's usually like a camera option here. It's not any camera options here on, on, on the desktop version. But on a mobile version, you'll have a camera option. So then what you would do is you pull out the camera option and take I shall take a snapshot of the closing disclosure or whatever document you want to um, analyze. And then um, you just hit the send button here. So you just send it. And what it'll do is it's sending the closing disclosure into this channel. OK, so let that process let me realize that something is going on and then we'll just continue to build our automation. OK, so the next thing you want to do is you want to um, analyze that analyze the document that comes in. Okay. So we got to use, um, open AI. All right. And the open AI we want to use is we want to use, um, analyze the image. So we're using the vision. All right. The vision is what we do when we analyze in the images. So we analyze image and the prompt is, um, let me just cheat a little bit here. Let me just copy and paste the prompt. That we have here and then we'll we'll go through it together okay so what i wrote here is um i said act as a real estate um, document expert specifically having the knowledge of a mortgage loan officer and a title officer you will be provided with an image of a document most likely within your expertise from a notary um yeah from a notary I need for you to do the following one briefly explain what the document is and one to two sentences if applicable analyze and summarize any numbers that you see on the image and provide a, and provide a breakdown if uh, there are any signature sections or place where the signer needs to fill in such as like lines check boxes etc please provide a please provide a brief please provide a brief that the notary i should say a brief summary sorry Brief summary that the notary can use to guide the signer. If there's a notarization section, briefly explain to the notary how it should be properly filled and refer them to any examples if possible. Provide tips and point out any common mistakes notary make not, notaries can make can make sorry for the typos can make when it comes to this particular document. He's writing English, analyze, and etc. Okay, in the English language. Okay, all right um in the english language okay so the image we want to add is the image url actually no we want to do the image file and it's going to take it from slack okay so it automatically knows that the image file is uploaded to slack and it's going to analyze that image what we're using is we're going to use gpt 4.0 because gpt 4.0 is the it includes a vision technology that allows you to analyze images okay all right and we're going to use say 4,000 tokens just to give myself enough breathing okay all right so we hit okay and i think now let's actually before we do that let's just rename this sorry a second let's rename this we'll call it analyze and uh let's put on our emoji because we got to keep the emojis going and let's see let's use this okay we will hit save. Uh, why is there a red thing? Which might be empty. Let's see. It may be something. Everything is filled in. Mm 
you know, I think it just, it just didn't save properly. Hit OK. We hit save and let's run this now. Let's see what, what, what happens. Let's run it once. All right. So I found the image. It, down, it downloaded the image, right? This is the image I saw Slack. Ah, uh, uh, yes. The server had an arrow up. I'm just your request. Sorry about that. Come on, man. You're apologizing. What did you have problems with? All right, let's see if we can run it one more time. Let it again. I'm doing this at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, a lot of times, sometimes the servers can get busy. Um, so you just have to run it again. Hopefully this time it should, it should run. I'm going to be doing this in real time. So that's that's great that you guys can get to see this. So that way you understand that. You know, again, open, as I mentioned earlier, all this open AI technology and this um, automation, this is all new, you know, so. Excuse me, everyone is just testing it out. Everyone is running different scenarios and um, it's, it's heavy processing, heavy processing on the back end. So things can have a little hiccup. All right. But this time it ran. OK, so let's see what what what, what came about it. So let's look at the results. All right. Briefly explain what the document is on two sentences. OK. Um, this is the closing disclosure, which outlines the final loan term and closing costs for a mortgage refinance. It is used to compare the actual terms and costs to the initially estimated ones provided in the log estimate. Okay, that's good. If applicable, if applicable, analyze and summarize. Okay, so this is answering the question. The loan amount is for three hundred twenty-five thousand. The interest rates are three point one two five percent. The bi-weekly, the bi-weekly um, principal and interest payment is eleven thirty-one ninety-nine. The estimated total total bi-weekly payment includes taxes and insurance of fourteen sixty. Our uh, taxes and insurance assessments are estimated at uh, three hundred twenty-eight dollars. So then it goes down to uh, cash to close amount. Um, the signer needs to review and confirm the loan terms and cost as listed on the document. The document uh, totally includes a section for the borrower's signature and date of the acknowledgement. On this particular page of the closing disclosure, there is no ex uh, explicit notarization um, sections visible. However, if other parts of the document uh, of the package includes a notarization section, it tells you what to do. It is to ensure all amounts and terms are correctly confirmed by the borrower as they cannot be modified after the signing. Double check all check boxes and fillable fields to make sure none are missing. Confirm that all dates are correctly filled in, particularly the date issued, closing date and disbursement date. Verify that the borrower understands their responsibility to verify figures against the initial loan term, the loan estimate, sorry. Remind the borrower to sign and date every required section and double check their signature matches the name printed on the act. So that's pretty good. I mean, if we were to pull back up this closing disclosure and do, let's do a quick comparison, um, let me see, but up real quick, All right? So let's see, let's pull up the closing disclosure and let's compare it. So look at the numbers. Um, it's showing like it's, um, let's zoom in a little bit and make it easy for you. It's 325,000, it's 325,000, um, 3.125%. 3 um, it's, uh, 11, 11 during one is the estimate. Okay. And, um, let's see. What else did they come up with? Oh, yeah. So it said the tax insurance. So I pulled all the numbers. It, told, it said exactly what it is. Did it say anything about flood insurance? Let's see. The taxes, estimate, costs. It didn't say anything about the flood insurance. It would have been nice if they did point that out because it is checked off. So this particular property, um, the escrow is included with flood insurance, which is not normal. Um, you know, I mean, I guess obviously with FEMA and all and like the diff different um, climate changes that it's possible that um, uh, a little bit more flood insurance is required for certain zones, but you don't see it often. Like, so I would say maybe I don't know, 10 or 10% 10 of the time you may see a loan, a document, a uh, package that included flood insurance. So it would have been nice to get pointed it out because that's something that um, probably could probably be cool about the close. But I think it did a pretty good job at just analyzing everything and pulling the numbers and letting you know exactly what's uh, involved. So 
that's great so what we're going to do is as we continue i'm going to put another document in the slack channel so that way when we run it again we can get a different um, outcome this time what i want to do is we can do let's let's have for uh let's do let's do uh, i'll do something with them let's do something let's do an affidavit of title all right so i'm going to pull the affidavit of title again this is just a sample document I'm going to set it to the slack channel and we can take a look at it real quick just to show you give me a second if i'm out of the screen all right so this is a, uh, a sample aff affidavit of title um sorry if it's a little hard to see in your end but again on this one i redacted i redacted the information on the affidavit of title and let's see what what comes up here all right so let's continue to build that scenario so what we need to do next is we need to send this information, the information that we got from Open um, OpenAI, back into the Slack channel. Okay, so let's, and then we also want to text it to ourselves. So what we're going to do is let's have a router, right? And what we're going to do is um, the first thing we want to do is let's go back into our Slack channel. So let's see. Um, we want to create. I'm going to create a message. Yep. All right, I'm back. Sorry, I, video cut off. <laughs> We're back. All right. So, um, what we want to do is we want to um, send the message back to Slack, right? So, if we go into Slack, and what we're going to do is we're sending, we're creating a message, and we want to add our uh, our private channel, and the text we want to add into the private channel is. Um, the message that we got from the message that we got from um, OpenAI, right? As far as the blocks, uh, just so we can continue the conversation, uh, what we can do is we can add a block here. And the blocks is the way Slack treat blocks is basically like conversational blocks. So if you want to like create a thread from the specific conversation, which would be good. So it's like, say for example, I mentioned earlier about having team mem team members and having different setting up different channels for different team members in Slack. But say for example, you just wanted to create one channel so that maybe other team members can learn from each other. Um, you can just use this block function so that way the the um, automation can respond specifically to that um, that image. Okay. So so let's go back here and it's looking for the uh, limits and it's looking for specific moment here okay so we hit okay and let's rename this rename and we are going to rename it to post the response right and then let's just give it a little emoji again awesome okay let's hit save and let's run it Okay, so should have picked up the second document, which is the uh, affidavit of title, and then it's going to run that information. Oh, okay. So we got an error. Let's see what happened. Uh, the channel not found. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I didn't, I did, I did receive these errors, um, before with, uh, with, uh, private channel but not with the public so i mean um if we were to create it as a private uh, sorry as a public channel this should work a little bit better but um let me see if i can get find a workaround for this one sec all right so we can try this again all right so um in this initial scenario we I ran into the issue where um i ran into an error where it's where it's where make couldn't find or couldn't locate the channel that I was referring to in, in this, in the module. So I was referring to the AI doc explainer demo, which is the name of the channel, but it's private, right? So I, being that it's private, it must have certain permissions that it's not allowing you to access it. In my initial testing, I tested it using a public channel and I didn't run into this problem, but there's, there is a workaround. So what you need to do is you need to log into Slack via the browser. Uh, once you log into Slack via the browser, uh, and you click on the channel, this is the code that they're looking for. So they're looking for the code, um, starts with a C for channel. And then you go back in and I should be able to put this code here. 
and, and use this code instead of using the actual channel name and it should it should work this time so should is the output for so let me hit, let me hit save and let's hit uh let's run it once and it should hopefully work this time okay so uh right now this the uh the workflow is analyzing the document the document that we we got was the affidavit of title it says aot so that's how i know it's pulling the right one and we got an error again cannot find channel so it doesn't like it doesn't like the it doesn't like private channels for some reason um I, I did it in my scenario i did it with a public channel and i didn't have this issue um we could rebuild the scenario with a public channel but this is going to be the same steps where you just have to uh, put in the um the channel name um and if not just select from list uh private channel it's not showing okay maybe i'll map it maybe i'll do it this way let's let's, let's try it one more time i mapped it and let's see if it works all right, guys, we're doing this on the fly. We're doing this on the fly. You're trying to get this working. And that's the thing with make. Uh, you, you can spend hours trying to figure out exactly how things are going to work efficiently. And then you eventually get it to work. And um, it'll be good. Yep. Yeah. All right. So it's, it's just not for some reason it's not finding that channel. All right. But this, we, all, we know the channel exists. All right. So let's just move on. I'll delete this here. But um, if we were to use, instead of using a private channel message, if you use a public channel message and you, you know what? I can, I can, I can convert it. So let's just do this. Let's uh, convert it to a public channel and uh, go from there. Let's see this. Um, if we go to Slack and we click on it, and we go to channel details. I should be able to convert it to from public. Uh, sorry, from private to public. Let's just do that. Let's see settings. I'm going to edit. Let's see now. Just sorry, it's right in front of me. Change to public channel. We're going to change this to a public channel. Okay. So now the channel is public. All right. So let's do this. Now we got to have to. We're going to have to tweak a little bit here. Um, instead of this being a private. Uh, I thought it was gonna work this time, but let's just see. We can we can try it. Uh, set, set from list. We can say public channel. We're not gonna map it this time. And we should see AI doc explainer demo. We hit OK. It may not work properly, but let's just try it. Um. Okay. It pulled the affidavit of title, and then it should it should it should post it right back to to make and try to slack. Okay. And after, after everything runs and it posts what we should, what we should do next, see it work this time. And it just, it just does not like, um, private channels. Okay. So look at it here. So everything that we put here, it says this document is an affidavit of title specifically for mortgage. Uh, specifically for a mortgage of property it serves as a legal statement or the a legal statement by the property owner affirming various facts about the property ownership the marital status liens and other relevant information um it goes into saying what the crucial number is uh the signer needs to fill out the address where they live in section two uh the notarization section on the bottom of the document requires the notary to affirm that the affidavit was signed and sworn before them on a specific date. Notary must sign and possibly stamp the document and include the date of the notarization. The exact wording and placement should follow any local compliance rules and best practices for proper acknowledgement. And these are some tips for the notary. Ensure that all required sections are fully completed and legible. We'll double check that the appropriate check boxes of in the marital history and child support sections are marked correctly that's actually a great tip because a lot of times when notaries fill out the affidavit of the title they skip they go right down to the bottom have to sign or sign and they notarize and they move on and the marital section is not completed um so and a lot of times documents get kicked back by title because that document that section is not completed so it's important that the notary uh, it, um guides the signer on this um confirming the marital status confirming that there's no uh child support um, any liens or judgments, you have to confirm that. And a lot of times 
affidavit of the title has two pages where on the second page, I mean, as for like the last four of the center's social, um, this document is, you know, it's not, re not reported, but it is kept in the, by title, um, affirming on their end that no judgments or liens or any encumbrances, um, on the actual signer or any judgments on any, 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 of, any of the signer, uh, that's prevent that open that will prevent them from buying the property. Okay. And so that's important for you to, 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 to make sure. Okay. All right. Uh, verify the identity, identity of the signers of present, fill out the notary, uh, notary, notary sections completely and accurately, including your, your notary stamp for applicable. Be aware of any common mistakes such as misdates. <laughs> that was just important. Uh, incomplete, um, property addresses or unmarked. Okay. So that's, those are good tips, especially for the affidavit. Okay. All right, cool. So what's next? So next, um, that's really all you really need to do, but just for overkill, what I want to do is I want to see if we can send a text message to ourselves. So I'm going to say, what we're going to do here is we're going to use open AI again. Um, uh, this time, um, let's see, let's pull a code here. We can use open AI and we are going to use, uh, we're going to make, create a completion. And on this completion, we just keep it with chat GPT 4.0. And what we could do is we add a message and under message, the role is going to be user and the content. Let's put the content here. We're going to say your role is to summarize the text below, the text below and format it to be used as a text message. Uh, make sure to include important facts. Your, your output should be less than 1600 characters. Please write the following analysis in plain text, and we should include the text. So the text that we need to include is the results from number three. If we see that every scenario you run has a number attached to it, but this is just analyze the image. So analyze the image. Um, we want to get those results and put that. Okay, the max token we need, we'll just leave it at 2000. That should be more than enough to cover 1600. Uh, okay, and we're going to rename this. We'll rename it to text message. So this is just actually just preparing the text message for us. And we're going to use uh, Twilio to actually send the text message. Okay. Let's go back here and let's go to within our toolbox. And then next, what we're going to do is we are going to use Twilio. Again, Twilio's use is like a virtual phone system. All we're going to do is we want to create a message. And the message you want to create, um, send a message from a uh, phone number and my phone number is attached there. And what you want to do is you want to take the results from the prep, put that, oops, I'm not, sorry, not two, but the message body, um, create a message body and the body is actually be the resulting text. The phone number is. All right, I put my phone over there. It's my cell phone. I didn't want to put my cell phone out there like that. So um, what you have to do is you have to format it in the uh, like a, a, a plus one or the plus whatever your um, country code is. And then you want to put your phone number. In. So that's the format that it's looking for. That totally I was looking for. So, all right. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to send a text. Let's see. Let's rename this. Um, soon. Text. All right. And through this emoji and I'm sending a text. Oh, I said, okay. And let's see if we can run this again. Um, I should have probably put a document in there, but let's see if we can run it again. If it's going to run. Yeah. It's looking for an image. So while I was waiting, I should probably should have put a, uh, a um, a, a, an, an image, an image in the, in the Slack channel. This time I'll put uh escrow disclosure statement. Let's try that one. That one has a bunch of numbers. Let's see what happens. Let's send that in the Slack channel. Then we have to wait a few minutes for it to analyze that um, escrow disclosure statement. And again, we can pull it up real quick so we can take a look at it. All right. So this escrow disclosure statement, it doesn't have any signature lines, but it is important. Um, um, it kind of displays if, for those who don't know what the escrow, disc disclo escrow disclosure statement is, it's just Banks not trusting us to pay our own taxes and insurance. That's what it is. Um, so they collect money from every time you make a payment, they take money from your payment, throw it into a, an account that you don't make interest on. 
Um, they don't make any interest on it, but they do probably. Um, side note. Uh, and then the money goes in there. And every quarter, taxes are paid. And a year from the time that the signer signs is when they'll make a payment to their um, insurance carrier, right? To pay any um, property um, insurance. That is usually the case. I usually tell signers that any money that's in this account is their money. Um, if they ever refinance or sell the home, any money in that account will be sent to them. That's usually my skill when I get to when I get to this page for the escrow. Um, close your statement. Okay, so let's see if uh, anything was picked up on the Slack channel. And you know what? It may. Um, I'm assuming may made the channel public. Any members in this workspace can't see it. Turn it. Okay. Let's see. We need to give it a few minutes to run or we may need to change this from a from a private channel to a public channel. That's the only thing that I can think of that can be not may work. Let's, let's just give it a few minutes and I'll be back once it's ready to run. All right, I'm back. All right, so let's see if we can run the scenario now. Um, the document should have been, uh, should be available uh, in Slack and we should be able to run this. All right, so let's, let's hit run. No. I think the problem is because we have this as a private channel. All right, so let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. Let's, um, let's rebuild it. All right, um, let's see. Give me one second. Let's do this. We're building this together. And again, if you're part of the community, you'll have the completed one that's working. <laughs> All right. Let's rename this. Cool. All right. Let's delete this module and then we'll add a panel. Go to Slack and we go to, I'm oh, sorry, public. We'll go to public channel and we'll select from the list. And we got to go here. Set it to one. Hit OK. Let's rename this. And we'll just that back. Oops. Okay, I'm looking for images. Go here. Okay. You know, I'm just have to kind of repoint things a little bit. So let's go back into the. Yep. Hey. That should be good. Right. This should still be good. This should still be good. Yeah, that should still be good. All right. So let's hit save and let's try to run it. Uh, let's see. I didn't hit save. Let's save anyway. Should be good. Now you kidding me? This right there. Hit OK. Let's run it once. URL private download. I hit save, right? But anyway, it's pointing to the scenario. All right, sometimes you got to refresh a page. So let me just refresh this here. But I hit save. Let's make sure I don't lose anything. And let's run it again. Let's refresh the page. All right, so we're just refreshing the page for Slack and let's just run it again. All right, let's just run once and let's see. Lucky. We are going to link it and link it again. Because a lot of times it's there. So let's go here, go to file, URL, download, hit OK. Man, oh man, oh man. Oh, is it this one? Oh, that's the problem. Okay. So that's what it's trying to do. It's trying to go, maybe go back to the block. 
Hello, Nick. Yeah, perfect. Sweet. All right, so that's what it was causing. I thought it was a problem with this one. All right, so let's run it once. Uh, messing your up. So we gotta, we gotta probably add it again. So let's add it to the channel one more time. And then I'll be back once it's fully working. Sorry for all of these errors or this, these hiccups, but we gotta get it right. We gotta make sure it's working, all right? Um, let's go back into adding the escrow disclosure statement. And we are going to upload it. Now, once it's uploaded, we should be good to go. All right, so let's uh, be back. I'll be back once it's fully, once we'll give it a few minutes and then it should be good to go. All right, guys. So I'm gonna speed this up a little bit so that I can choose exactly where we want it to run. So if we right click here and then we select uh, run this module only, or we could choose where to start. If we choose where to start, um, we're gonna choose manually and let's choose this image right here as object. Hit okay. And let's run it. This way we can force it to run a little bit. Instead of having to wait for it to complete and for it to complete, we could just force it to run right now. But again, if you out and you take a picture of the document and you have a you have it set to you have it set to um automatically um, run every five minutes. Then after you take a picture after five minutes, it should run, but we are trying to force things to run a little bit faster. So that's why that way it ran that way. Okay. So, all right. So send me a text message. See right here. Well, it should be sending me a text message soon and I'll show that to you as soon as it comes through, but if we go back to the Slack, if we go back to the Slack channel, we'll see that it it processes everything here. So this document is an initial escrow account disclosure statement, which provides an estimate of activity in the escrow account during the coming year based on payment payments anticipated to be made from this account. All right. So the loan amount is three twenty five. It shows what's a, um, the initial escrow uh, amount. It also shows the um, what was cushioned, uh, total disbursement. This so is no signature sections. There's no notary sections. Give you some tips. It says ensure ensure that all information, especially payment amounts and due dates, is clearly understood by the borrower. Verify that the document is aware of the initial deposit and the biweekly payment amount. Double check the the computations and cushions amount and ensure accuracy. Remind the borrower to keep the statement for comparison with actual activity at the end of the escrow year. So as you can see, this, this document is super, or this, this automation is super, uh, beneficial to you. You could definitely use it. Um, if you run into a situation where you don't know what a document is, or you don't know what a document means, you have no clue what a document means. You can use this automation for yourself to uh analyze documents you have ai analyze the document for you i know you ran into a few hiccups along the way but we figured it out okay be sure to like this video be sure to subscribe below if you have any comments be sure to comment below as well and i look forward to seeing you on the next video peace